Well, hell fire this rock to riff. I am back for another Metalhead Envy, and here we are. The finish line. The final track of I can never say this whole fucking album's name. Petro Draconic something the blah 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 blah. blah, blah. I wish Apple, because I use Apple Music as my main source of uh, checking music out off camera. But they don't have the, it sucks because they don't have the full album title on here. They they, they cut it off after uh, Petro Draconic Apocalypse or Dawn of the Eternal Night and Annihilation of Planet E and the dot 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 dot. One day when I can actually have me a badass vinyl sound system. I don't know if I would actually do that here in my studio or if I'd just make my living room a fucking soundscape. Uh, I'll be able to do the stuff like that and all that. Uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to ask everybody that comments. When y'all watch this one, leave a comment with just the album title that y'all want me to check out. And I'm going to say, try to leave it to one album. I keep getting so many different albums to check out because I know there's a big catalog. And I'm planning on going through as much of this discography as I can. I, I, I know personally, off camera, I want to go through the whole thing. But I'm also uh, going to follow the fan base's lead. So everybody comment which album y'all think I should go to next. And the one that gets commented the most is what, what I'll be doing. But either way, let's dive on into Flamethrower. Fuck! I'm not gonna lie, that opening drum riff right there made me think, What now? <laughs> Fucking who did that song? I don't know. Yeah, that's fucking me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a little bit of a crazy time and going there. Lazy fuck. That's a little bit of a weird one. Okay, so that section right there, it's interesting. I think to my ears, and it's just because I am not a percussion percussionist expert whatsoever. Uh, it's funny, even though I play in a prog metal band, Ricardo Endeavor, I gotta plug myself, uh, my drummer and my guitarist, and I've said this in other reactions as well, they make fun of me, they laugh at me, because my timing is terrible, because I count everything to a four, and they're like, no nah, man, you're, you're a section I wrote in our song, Schizophrenic. My drummer was like, yo, that's like a like a 13 over a 12 or 11 over a 10 or some weird ass shit. And I was like, oh, really? I count four. <laughs> I always count everything in my head to a four, even though I'll just extend it. Sometimes it's one, two, three, four. Sometimes it's one, two, three. So uh, that one right there throws me for a loop, that little bitty section. I'm going to have to show this track to my drummer and be like, yo, what the fuck is that right there? To me, it's 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 a slight bit of a jumble, but it's interesting. It's still, it's still cool. Oh, 
Oh, I like that. Ain't that a riff? That's a little bit of a callback to some other songs, right? That section was so fucking smooth. main gist but it's like because you got that but then it's the tom rolls that's going on right there that's throwing me for a loop that's fucking slick that's really fucking slick right there a killer vocal line i like how the vocals melody raised and lowered with the guitar riff that that was cool i wish that trick would have been used a little bit more often throughout this whole album i dig the fuck out of that it already looks like flamethrower for me is out of the long songs that are on this record because don't get me wrong motor spirit and dragon are badass but out of the long songs, uh, looks like Flamethrower might take the cake for me. I am truly envious of this track because my band, we just got done with our longest song on our second record. And it only ended up being 8 minutes and 50 seconds. And uh, it's a little more spacey than this one. And I'm listening to this, I'm like... <sighs> 
can't wait till I actually start writing another long song for my own band because I'm about to pull up flamethrower to the guys and be like, yo, check this fucking shit out. What's our interpretation? Because this is fucking slick. Well, that ride. Get a badass solo. Oh, oh! Please allow me to introduce myself. Yeah, I feel like I'm. Transferred into the desert. Looking for a dino dinosaur. Looking for a T Rex. I'm gonna ride his motherfucking back. <laughs> With a big ass goddamn sword. To crush my enemies. And hear the limitations of their women. <laughs> Drunk me at a live show with this, I'd be fucking zoning. <laughs> I'd be out of my mind. Yeah, there we go. This fucking drummer is so good. Everybody in this band is just so good. solo in here. Some lead work going. I, I fucking love this. I love the fuck out of this. It's kind of funny, uh, I guess where I do have my whole review reaction series titled Metalhead Evenings, part of that was I thought that was just a catchy title to help me stand out in the crowd. But at the same time, like I really am truly a metalhead. Metal is my favorite genre. It's what I lean to the most. But I've had a few people within the King Gizzard fan base that's like, it's like, well, you need to listen to this album because you're a metal guy. You're not going to really like this and all that. I love all kinds of music. Uh, if I had to be honest, my least favorite genre is uh, country. <laughs> I am not the biggest modern country guy. Uh, let me rephrase that. I don't like modern country. I don't like modern... Well, I wouldn't say that. There's There's a couple songs here and there that's all right, but... Either way, like I'm so that's I think that's what's already hooked me with King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard is because I'm versatility is something I I strive for myself, 
in my own band, like uh, our first record, we called it somewhere in between, and we meant it as more of a pop, as pop sounding as we could write as a progressive instrumental band. We meant for that record to be like, like you could listen to it in the car with your mama, like old school mama that's not really into crazy heavy stuff but at the same time it would be appealing to people that's into heavy stuff like we meant that's why we called it somewhere in between because we was like man we want we want every type of person even if they're not into progressive instrumental metal that they'll still listen to this first record of ours and be like all right there's some there's some tracks we really dig in our second record we were uh damn i really want to tell y'all the title of it but all i can say is was is we're going our second record, this one's meant to impress the super heavy dudes. It is it is more truer to what all of us in the band really dig. And then we've already got a, a planned idea for the third record. And we're kind of, I wouldn't say we're King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, but the idea of having concept records and being able to do different sounds with each album is is the goal and these guys have fucking nailed it uh like this section here i hear a little bit i still think of the doors to me this album to me is very i don't know why but i think of the doors with better guitars and i hear more of a like a sample style hip-hop beat kind of right here in this section so i'm so excited to hear the versatility of this band, hear all the different soundscapes and everything they got going on, which sorry to go off on a rant right here in the middle of this section, but just had the thought cross my mind. Let me get back into it and finish this track out. All right, man. Makes me think I'll walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> yeah, like that percussion unit sounds like a DJ a little bit. Yeah. Start adding little stuff there. Which that was cool. I had somebody comment. I really like this comment if I could find it real quick was talking about breaking down the actual concept of this record and was saying that the motor spirit is like the god of the universe or some shit like that oh, damn it they had broke it down in such a cool fact because it was basically people of the world had prayed to the motor spirit and then something about a cat knocked over a candle into the the brew and created another monster that ended up destroying the world or something i was like yo this is so fucking cool but uh i like the callbacks in this because i'm pretty sure there was a riff i heard earlier i'd have to go through the album all the way through and then i know for sure which track it come from but now you've got the mode spirit. Yeah. 
love this electronic work. Y'all gonna laugh, but fucking, I think of Blade, the sample work, the synth work that's going on, that first Blade movie, man, I think of the, the Vampire Club right at the beginning, man. That's like one of my favorite electronic songs, dude. There's two, I got a bunch of electronic bands that I'm really into. There's one, uh, the algorithm's really cool. There's another I, I like called Nero. Uh, that dude's got... Uh, a couple albums that are badass. Uh, there's this one song. I can never remember what's the actual name of the Blade Club. Vampire Club uh, scene. But I love that fucking ele that song, man. Especially when the fucking speakers open up and blood's coming all down them. And they're all like... <laughs> that shit is so fucking good, man. There's another one I really like. It's in the movie. Uh, it's called Ready, Steady, Go. I can't remember if it's by Paul Oakenfield or some shit like that, but the Korean version of it is the bomb. Uh, but it was in that movie Collateral. I love that, especially in the movie Collateral when old little Tom Cruise is taking everybody out in that dance club and stuff. So I love this whole ass the end of this song right here i'm telling you if i was fucked up at this live show i'd be like i'd be like walking around t posing in the crowd while this is playing let me back up a little bit yeah i'd be like hey my drink thank you jesus <laughs> wondering if the full band would kick back in. I never fucking catch it. We are here to talk about Insidious. Okay, cool that deal. Initial film really struck me. I am here to talk about King Gizzard and the Lizard. Okay. So I know this is a long one, and I appreciate everybody that's still with me here to the end. I do have thoughts. So if you want to know my thoughts of the overall album, make sure you don't tune off. Analytics show me, analytics show me that most of y'all are gone before the last minute, minute or two of my videos. Uh, that was a really cool track. So, I can say that I do think this, the Mother Spirit outro, 
I, it's a little long. It's a little long, but I dig it. I think if you're a fan of King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard, they're going to be able to get away with murder with you. And so, if you ask me personally, <laughs> if you ask me personally about this record, I give this record a fucking 12, 13, 14, 15 horns out of 10. Uh, I, I have loved every track on this record. I like the concept, uh, the guitar riffs, the drums, the vocals. I mean, to me, this thing has it all. Uh, if I pump the brakes and take out my personal takes, I would give this record, I would probably do about a nine and a half out of 10 horns. And the only reason why is because I do feel like the vocals don't have enough melody change-ups throughout this whole album. Like you, I've been listening to this album all the way up. Basically, every time I, I posted a video or I've done this, recorded a, a reaction, posted it, I've been listening to the album bits and pieces. Yesterday, I was able to listen to the album from the beginning to Dragon. That is their order, right? Let me pull this shit up. Yeah. So now I'll be able to listen all the way from Motor Spirit to Flamethrower. And in that context, this outro might not feel that long. I think individually listening to the song, the outro does feel a bit and I think it's just the, the re repetition of the word motor spirit. I dig it, but at the same time, I could make the argument that I wish it would have, I wish they'd had like threw in a couple other parts of that, like three different chants to that would have kept that from sounding too, too long. It's just like Black Hole Sun from uh, Soundgarden to me has that same issue. It's a, it's a fucking fantastic track until the outro and it's just long as fuck that outro feels like it takes forever but the synth work in this and if i'm zoned in and i'm not thinking about anything else if i'm not thinking about it in, in an analytic way there's no problems i think my favorite part of the song though is was right here where was it at Right here. First time hearing this. This shit bumps, man. I get this picture playing this myself. Yeah. I fucking dig the fuck out of that spot. Uh, but overall, I have fucking loved this album. I don't know. I don't know which ones. I think, okay, so it's easier for me to say it like this. Converge was probably the, my least favorite from the record. I don't know why that song just didn't click with me. It, I mean, it, it's, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's. It fits within this concept of this album, but it didn't have enough sections in it that like super hooked me in. Uh, I still think Ambrose's part in Gila Monster or Gil is it Gila or Gila? I've had some comments saying it's like with an H over the G. I still think his vocal section uh, in that track is a top top spot of the album uh flamethrower <laughs> i don't know which longer song i like now flamethrower dragon or motor spirit hmm that's a tough choice i think maybe i'm leaning towards flamethrower at this second because i it's i hadn't heard it till just now so now i'm like oh 
I gotta play it a few times. I, I've been listening to the fuck out of the Motor Spirit and uh, Dragon, so I might have had a little wear and tear on them by now. That was a fucking awesome album. That was an awesome, awesome, awesome ride. What other thoughts? What other thoughts? Cool ass album cover. Badass band name. Badass guitar riffs. I, I think I do have to give it to <clears throat> the MVP of the record to me is the guitar riffs. These two riff the fuck out. And even in the sections where they're actually riding a riff for a pretty good while, they're, they're able to add just enough flair here and there to keep it from going stale. Uh, I'll have to send this track to my brother. If my, if my brother don't like this track, I'm going to have to cut ties. <laughs> nah, I love my brother, but I feel like this track is right up his alley. Uh, even though I know he won't watch this, he he bitched at me a little bit, told me that my my videos are too long. But what else could I say? Man, I am so excited to dive into King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard. Like I said at the beginning of the video, well, hold on, let me pump the brakes. If this is your first time to my channel, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh. And I was going to say, leave me some song suggestions, but not this time. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I want everybody that decides to comment, comment the album title, one album title you think I should go to next. And who, whatever title we get the most of, that's the album I'm going to check out next for King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Because, yeah, I think I'm, I'm hooked on this band. I think this band, I can safely say that they have at least broken into my top 20. Now, whether or not the rest of their discography pushes them up higher than, uh, or that's yet to, I'm yet to find that out. That's yet to be determined. There we go. That's the smarter way of putting that. That was such a fun ride. I can't wait to listen to this album all the way from beginning to end and now. No pauses, no stops. Fucking just motor spirit to flamethrower. With all that being said, stay positive, stay rocking, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.